Good morning, First Church, Church School. Hope you're good today. My name is Hillary Hopkins, and I have been coming to First Church, I think for about seven and a half years now. And I really love it. I love the people there, and I love all the special things that we do together. Um, I have two daughters. They're grown up now. My older daughter has three sons. Those are my grandsons. And they're in college, so they're big kids. And my husband and I have a cat. His name is Skipper, and he's a pretty good cat. So this morning, I am going to read to you a wonderful book called Most People. Hmm, Most People. I'm going to start by showing you the wonderful cover of this book. Look at all these people. Look at them all. Wow. They all look different from each other, but the thing is, they're all people just like you and I are people, and so we're really all the same. Let's see what's in the book. I'm going to move my chair. So here's the title, Most People. Hmm, that looks like it's nighttime in that picture. Now it's daytime. So here we have the words are by Michael Liana, and the pictures are by Jennifer Morris. And this book was published by the Tilbury House Publishers in Thomaston, Maine. Hmm, so it comes from Maine. Maybe you've been to Maine. Most people love to smile. Most people love to laugh. They're having breakfast. The babies make quite a mess there. <laughs> Most people love to see other people smile and laugh too. Most people are good people. Most people want to help when they see someone crying. Most people want to help when they see someone is in trouble. Hmm. She's waving at her friend across the street there. He's the one with the little dog. Here's a lady with a cane crossing the street. I use a cane sometimes. Here's a, a lady, I think she's blind. She's got a seeing eye dog helping her. And here's a, a policeman helping some visitors find something. They've got a map and they want to know how to get somewhere. Oh, look, this girl has fallen off her bike and that guy over there is running with a first aid kit to help her. Here's a guy walking down the street. Oh, here's somebody up here with a shopping cart full of stuff. I wonder if that's all her stuff. There's a lady over there in the window. She's putting some pies to cool in the window. I guess she just made them. And here's this guy playing. It looks like a, a ukulele, like a little tiny guitar or something. Hmm. Most people want to make other people, even strangers, feel good. Most people are very good people. Oh, this is the lady with the cane. She wants to get on the bus. And here, this guy that we saw walking down the street, he says, after you, ma'am, he's not gonna push on the bus ahead of her so she can get a seat and be comfortable. Oh dear, oh, oops. Some people do bad things. They yell bad words, 
Looks like somebody upstairs here is yelling something not very nice. Oh, dear. Oh, my. The storekeeper isn't looking. And it looks like this boy is maybe going to steal an apple. Oh, dear. Some people lie and steal. They bully and hurt and destroy. Oh, my. But most people don't do these things. That's true. Hmm. Oh, wow. If you could line up all the people who want to be good and all the people who want to be bad, the good line would stretch from here to the tallest mountain. Look at that. Here's all the good people, and here it goes. Ooh, doo -doo -doo -doo. This is a long line. Doo -doo 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 all the way up. All the people in the bad line could crowd together in a dark and gloomy room. Hmm. Hmm. People who do bad things can change. Oh, look at it. He's returning the apple. He says, what do you think he's saying? He says, I'm sorry. There is a seed of goodness inside people who do bad things waiting to sprout. There is a seed of goodness inside them waiting to sprout. Hmm. Most people love the sunshine. Most people love the earth. Most people love watching things grow. Here's the community garden. Hmm. Hmm. A person who is frowning and mad or sad or mean is like a sour grape in a bunch of sweet grapes. Well, she doesn't look happy. That person would almost always rather be happy, smiling, and laughing. Everyone looks nicer when they smile and laugh. Oh, she brought some flowers. When you see something bad happening, you may soon see someone trying to help. The helper might be you. Someone is always there being good because being good is what most people do. Hmm. Oh, look, see, he dropped some money and the boy with the white dog is showing him, you dropped that. These guys are buying some pies. Hmm. Wonder what they'll do with them. Eat them, I guess. Oh. Most people like to run and dance and play or share stories with someone they love or snuggle with someone they love. Oh, look at here. She's snuggling with her seeing eye dog. Oh, good dog. Hmm. Most people like a kind word. Most people like thinking good thoughts about others. Oh, 
Is that the lady who had the shopping cart with her stuff in it? I think so. He's giving her one of those pies. That's nice. Hmm. <laughs> Most people smile when they see a baby. Most people glow when they hear or say, I love you. I love you. Most people in the world know that most people are very good. Look there, are all the people that we met in the story. I wonder if you can find all of them and what they're doing now. I wonder if you know anybody who sometimes does bad things. I wonder if you can imagine a seed for good sprouting inside that person. I wonder if you've ever felt bad or mad or sad and somebody helped you feel better. I wonder if you have ever helped somebody who was feeling bad or sad or mad so they would feel better. Thank you for listening. Bye. Hi everyone. My name is Lori Williams and I have been your moderator and a deacon at the church. You might recognize me and might have seen my grown up son Zachary and my teenager daughter Ivy with me in the pews sometimes. Sarah asked me to read a story and today's book is called Maybe God is Like That Too. The author is Jennifer Grant and the illustrator is Benjamin Shipper. Maybe God is Like That Too. I live in the city where the sidewalks and subway cars and buildings and buses are packed with people but I've never seen God before. Grandma, does God live in the city? I asked one morning at breakfast. Yes, God is here, she says. You just need to know where to look. Whenever you see love, joy, and peace, God is there, she says, stirring her tea. Wherever there's patience, kindness, and goodness, God is there too. When you see faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, that's God's spirit at work. On the way to school, I'm on the lookout. I see a bus full of tourists and count 10 bright yellow taxis. I spy a man sweeping a stoop. And Grandma and I laugh when we see a tiny dog wearing a fluffy purple sweater. At school, Grandma hands me my lunch and hugs me close before she says goodbye. That's what love looks like to me. Maybe God is like that too.
On the swings, I pump so hard, I see over the wall into the alley. My friends shout, higher, higher, as my feet fly way up into the sky. That's what joy looks like to me. Maybe God is like that too. Outside, car horns blast and sirens scream, but my classroom is quiet and calm. That's what peace looks like to me. Maybe God is like that too. I try to tie my shoes, but the laces tangle around my fingers. My teacher sits down beside me and shows me how to tie them. That's what patience looks like to me. Maybe God is like that too. On the way home, I see a doorman wearing a red cape and a hat with a shiny brim. He's holding a door for a man using a wheelchair. The man moves very slowly and the doorman chats with him and smiles. That's what kindness looks like to me. Maybe God is like that too. When I'm setting the table for dinner, there's a knock at the door. It's our neighbor from downstairs bringing us a loaf of bread. It's golden brown and warm and wrapped in a thin white towel. That's what goodness looks like to me. Maybe God is like that too. After dinner, I work on my homework while Grandma stands at the kitchen sink washing dishes and humming to herself just like she does every single night. That's what faithfulness looks like to me. Maybe God is like that too. At bedtime, Grandma sits at the edge of my bed singing me a lullaby and stroking my head. She tucks my blankets up close around me. That's what gentleness looks like to me. Maybe God is like that too. I lie in bed watching the curtains flutter. I want to talk about the dog we saw today and how high I can swing, but Grandma says that once I'm tucked in, I have to stay in bed until morning. I close my eyes and try to fall asleep. That's what self-control looks like to me. Maybe God is like that too. I saw God over and over again today, whenever I saw love, joy, and peace, and wherever there was patience, kindness, and goodness. When I saw faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, I saw God's Spirit at work. I don't see God the way I see my friends, or street lights, or the river, but I see signs of God's Spirit all around me, right here in the city. I know what God is like. Maybe I can be like that too. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. This is from the letter to the Galatians, chapter 5, verses 22 to 23a. Hey everybody. My name is Kate Laser. I am one of the ministers of our church, and some of you might know me as the director of the Friday Cafe, a program where people come together to share a meal and get to know each other, and get some things that they might be needing. Some of you might even have had a chance to help out at the Friday Cafe once or twice. I also have written the words to some of the songs that we like to sing together on Sunday, songs like Let There Be Life in This House or Come All You Thirsty to the River, and maybe you've sung those songs too. Well, one thing that I love to do that I don't get to do very much anymore because my kids are all grown up is read stories. I love to read stories. And today I have a story for us. And what I'm gonna do is just turn the camera around so we can just look at the pictures together. They're beautiful pictures. This story is called Because, they're, because Nothing Looks Like God. Because Nothing Looks Like God. It's by Lawrence Kushner and Karen Kushner. And it's illustrated by Dawn Majewski. Dawn Majewski made these beautiful pictures. So let's have a look at this book together. 
I'm outside at my house, so sometimes you'll hear other voices too. Here we go. Where is God? God is in the beginning. In the first red ripening tomato. And in cookies fresh from the oven. In the first fun day of vacation. And in the tiny hands of a baby. God is in the beginning. Where is God? Mm. God is in the end. In the last sweet bite of birthday cake. And in your worn, torn baby blanket. In the last wave goodbye at the end of a visit. And in the closing moments of someone's life. Where is God? God is in the way people come together. In the sharing of a cold and gloomy morning. And in the band-aid fix-up after a fall. Oh, has that ever happened to you? In homemade gifts made of clay and paint. And in morning hugs and good night kisses. Where is God? God is in the world, in bird song, in frog song chattering squirrels and in the fly caught in a spider's web. In caterpillars chewing leaves from daisies and in worms turning leaves into earth. There they are. Hello worms. Where is God? God is everywhere if we only look. God is everywhere we let God in. Where is this place? Have you been anywhere like this? Does this remind you of any place you've been? What does God look like? God looks like nothing. <laughs> and nothing looks like God. But there are many things you cannot see and still we are sure they are there. Like cool breezes on a summer night. Or the rays of the sun drying puddles of rain. Like the long hours until supper time or the short minutes of a day at the beach. You know they are there, but there's nothing to see.
like the kindness in someone's voice or the happiness in a song. Like the pride when mom or dad helps in your class. Or the jumpy excitement at the start of a holiday. You know it's there, but there's nothing to see. Like the love your mom adds to your good night story. Or your dad's hooray when you first tie your shoes. Like your hope when it's your turn at bat. Or your worry when your dog runs away. You know it's there, but there's nothing to see. God doesn't look like anything either because there is nothing to see but everyone and everything gives us clues that God is here clues that point to the one we cannot see hmm clues How does God make things happen? Look at your family. See sisters taking turns on the slide? And brothers sharing a new game? Watch how everyone comes together to help with dinner. How does God make things happen? Look at your school. A boy helps when another can't. When another can't reach, I mean to say. A boy helps when another can't reach. A girl shares her lunch. Watch how everyone shows the swings to a new friend. How does God make things happen? Look at your town. One family gives money for people who lost their home. Uh oh, looks like a fire happened. Can you hear my cat, Millie, talking to me? A neighborhood gathers books for children at the hospital. Watch how everyone helps the family with a new baby. How does God make things happen? Look in the mirror. Can you visit someone who feels lonely? Or pick up trash from the playground? Can you and your friends collect toys for children who have none? How does God make things happen? With little hands and big hands, with young hands and old hands, with your hands. Here's my hand. Can you make your hand touch my hand? I wonder how God 
is using your hands and my hands to share love with the world. Thank you so much for spending this time with me today. I've really had a nice time being with you. I'll see you around at church sometime soon.